Your time starts now. Chef, today we'll be working with green beans, boneless pork loin, a root beer, and a watermelon. I feel a bit strained in our relationship in that I'm scared to tell him what I don't like to eat because it'll just show up in these baskets. Chef, your time starts now. So these are fresh picked farmer's market green beans. They are just as good as they get. There's gonna be a lot of ways she can go with this. I'm guessing she would go in a stir fry direction. That does sound like it would be delicious. I also don't appreciate how he just assumes what I'm going to make all the time, even if that is what I'm going to be making. So what she's got is a boneless rib end pork loin. There's a bit of fat there, but there's not too much. You're gonna need to find a way to uh, both tenderize it, to cook out that fat, and to add a little bit more flavor into it. In 30 minutes, that's gonna be quite a challenge. It's a Korean style stir fry, so I went to grab some green onions and I'm going to be using the gochujang in the fridge to make this marinade for the pork. It looks like Chef Susan is really playing into that fresh thing we've got going here today. She's just run out to the garden to grab some truly monstrous green onions, almost the size of a small child. They are literally dripping with onion flavor. It definitely uh, suggests that she's going in an Asian direction. This poor chef. She's been cutting for several minutes and she's got miles left to go. These are truly gargantuan green onions. Whoever grew them must be an expert. <music> Chef Susan in the past has made remarks that she has strong feelings about root beer. Whether they're positive or negative, uh, I can't be expected to remember. But this soda, it's unlike most others. It's filled with spices and roots, like sassafras, uh, sarsaparilla, vanilla, star anise, licorice root. It can be considered medicinal to some, absolutely delicious to others. I hate root beer. I've never liked root beer. It tastes disgusting. I don't know why anyone drinks it. In addition to the disgusting root beer, he also gave me untreated green beans. So I had to take time to cut off all the ends, wash them. We can see Chef Susan here still working away at prepping all of her vegetables. You need to take off the tips of green beans because there is a string there that's just not inedible, but just unwelcome. Chef Susan, do you know what you're making yet? I think I have an idea. Would you say it went really easy on you? No. I really have no plans for the watermelon. I'm hoping I'll have time at the end to like make some type of watermelon ice drink or something since I know the judge loves to drink. 10 minutes down, chefs. With 20 minutes left, I really don't have much time to like make all these components in my dish. So I figure I would incorporate the green beans into the fried rice as a crunchy component. it looks like she's gonna be marinating that pork loin in the root beer. And hopefully she can turn that into some sort of uh, like a sticky sauce. We saw her looking for rice earlier, but she, she instead went away from that. Is she gonna depend on some noodles instead? She still has the water boiling, we see. It looks like she could be going for a, a noodle stir fry. I didn't make rice because I knew we had day old rice in the fridge and that's the best for fried rice. We can see that she's adding garlic now to really complete those stir fry flavors. The only question left is how is she going to use this icebox watermelon? It should be very sweet, but it's a subtle flavor. It can be very easy to lose it within a flavorful stir fry. Oh, 
Oh my, it looks like Chef Susan has pulled out the gochujang, a Korean fermented red pepper paste. Absolutely delicious and absolutely packed with flavor. She's also pulled out what looks to be some leftover rice. It might not be the freshest, but she's gonna save herself at least 20 minutes there. This chef is really using every moment she has for the things that she needs to spend time on and cutting corners wherever possible. I think only people who don't know how to make fried rice will think using day old rice is cutting corners. The gochujang is a really strong flavor, so the pork really doesn't have to marinate that long. 12 minutes, chefs. If you're going to cook something, sooner rather than later, please. I've tried making this fried rice once and I completely burned the garlic, so I'm praying that that doesn't happen again. That is a whole mess of garlic she's frying up there in the oil and it smells absolutely perfect. It looks perfect. There are seven minutes to go. Chef Susan looks like she's fried some garlic, made a garlic oil, and is now frying more garlic. It does make me a little bit concerned that I will be eating raw pork. Time will tell. The pork should be able to cook in time. I forgot that we had multiple pans. People might think that you're supposed to cook the eggs separate, but really you have to crack the egg into the rice like this. I knew at this point that making a drink with a watermelon would be impossible, so I just squeezed a little bit into the fried rice. With only three minutes left to spare, Chef Susan has added scrambled egg mixture to her stir-fried rice, and then also a squeeze of watermelon. What flavor that will impart, and whether or not it's welcome, remains to be seen. One minute, chef. You should be plating by now. Also, please make sure my pork is cooked through. I know the pork is cooked, but it's not cooked to the flavor profile that I want. You're supposed to cook it at really high heat until the sauce truly caramelizes. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. I think the time just escaped me. Don't know where all the time went. I know the pork is cooked. This is my first time trying this method of fried rice, so we'll see. <music> Chef, today I made for you a Filipino garlic and green bean fried rice with a Korean marinated pork. Please enjoy. I saw you add a lot of garlic to this fried rice. You coated it in the garlic oil. You coated it in garlic. But I'm not getting too much of that flavor. And I think it's because there's a real lack of salt. I get a lot of the oiliness, but a lot less of the garlic than I thought. I think a lot of that flavor has been cooked out, perhaps. And some of the green beans, they're a bit on the raw side. I was hoping for a little bit more of that uh, that stir-fry char. Some of them are a bit tough and a bit cold in the center. Oh. There is not a lack of flavor on the, the Korean marinated pork though. Did you intend for these to be eaten together? Yes. No. Mm. So much work. When they're combined together, everything just sings. The pork is very, uh, it's got a very strong flavor. It's very spicy, it's very saucy. The garlic fried rice, it's a very uh, subtle flavor. It's very oily, but when combined together, I think the flavor of the green beans, I think the flavor of the rice, the spices, the pork, it all starts to work together. I do wish you had plated 
a bed of the, the fried rice and then the, the pork on top, just so I could know from the beginning to mix them together. I knew he wanted everything together. However, the tongs were not where they normally were and I was not able to really plate it like I wanted to. I think if you had started cooking this pork earlier, there'd be a bit more of those, those charred bits. It's, it is cooked, surprisingly. I think it could have cooked a little bit longer. You just needed a little bit more time and a dash more consideration. I'm ready to make my judgment. For the appearance, I did like the variety of colors and textures and shapes and sizes. I don't think it was the most masterful way they could have been laid out, but it did have almost everything I want. I think I just wanted it arranged a little more elegantly. So for appearance, I give you four out of five stars. For flavor, I think a little bit was lacking with the green beans. I think with the green beans and the pork being stir fried, I think if they had been charred, that would have brought a lot of extra flavor to this uh, flavor I was, unfortunately, expecting. Oh my God, it's a little spicy in my throat. Um, I just think those were two opportunities you had to, to really take it forward a little bit more. Once it did mix together, it was a delicious dish, and I do give you four out of five there. I think creativity though, not so much inventiveness, but just the utilization of these uh, mystery bucket ingredients. I think that's where I need to really start deducting points. Green bean and pork stir fry. It's not the first time we've gone down this road. I did like that you went in a Filipino direction with the garlic fried rice. Let's take a look, closer look at these mystery bucket ingredients. The green beans, they were highlighted. The pork, it was highlighted. Where was the root beer? I saw you added to the marinade, but I did not taste it at all, and I did not see you add much to the marinade. For the watermelon, that was... Did you forget about the watermelon? I saw maybe a teaspoon of juice squeezed out onto the middle of the rice, but am I gonna detect it in there? Absolutely not. And I know that you knew that I wasn't gonna be able to detect the root beer. I wasn't gonna be able to detect the watermelon. That's half of the mystery buck ingredients that were you may as well not have even added them. If you had forgotten them entirely, I don't know if this dish would have been any different. And I don't know if we've had an ingredient so recklessly disregarded as much as this watermelon. It was almost disrespectful to the watermelon, and really that's it. For the sake of the two disregarded ingredients, I think I need to give you a two out of five. So Chef Susan, that does give you 10 points. It was ultimately saved by the fact that it is a delicious dish. So, Chef Susan, congratulations.